Hi, and welcome back to our latest episode of On the Job with Porak podcast. I'm Brian Marvel, president of Porak, with Porak Vice President Damon Kurtz. Today we have California Assembly member Tom Lackey of the 36th Assembly District and Porak North Valley Chapter Director Peter Durfee, who's running for Butte County Supervisor. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Well, you know, one of the big things that we've been pushing, and I know me personally, uh, I always like to get peace officers to run for elected office. Um, I think it's vitally important. I think it's even more important today considering what we're seeing in the state of California uh, with the high levels of crime and I basically say the decriminalization of crime uh, in our state legislature, unfortunately. And uh, obviously uh, several of the past initiatives, Prop 47, 57, AB 109, that type of stuff, um, I think play a part in the increased violence uh, that we're seeing. And, and the theft uh, is a big problem. So um, I'll start this one out mainly for uh, Assemblymember Lackey. Um, you've been in office for quite a while now. Um, I was just curious, what what got you to want to think about running for office after your, uh, your career in the uh, California Highway Patrol? Public service has been part of uh, my upbringing ever since I was a, a young man in Boy Scouts. I was an Eagle Scout, and I learned the value of service, and I, I learned that it, I, I was in a small community. Uh, I, I joke that uh, I graduated eighth in my class, didn't make the top 10%. I come from a very small community, and where I saw the value of service in a very direct way, and I've, I've believed in it my entire life. I ran for a school board uh, when my children became school age, was successful there. And uh, I, I will just tell you that I'm very thankful I th that I've been blessed with a servant's heart. I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, there, there's a sense of satisfaction that comes from, from public service, even in a, uh, a confused society like we have right now, in my opinion. Uh, people are looking at the wrong uh, reward right now. And uh, it's, it's a privilege, but I... Maybe it's, that's not a good word to use in these days, but uh, I, I would tell you that I had the benefit of good friendships, good family, and uh, I, I believe that I, I need to share that. Peter, what about you? I mean, you're, the roles are a little bit reversed. You're now just starting to, uh, to pursue uh, elected office. What, what really brought you to want to consider running for uh, county supervisor? Well, it kind of started with, I mean, I was born and raised in Chico and Butte County. And over the last 15 years, I've served my community and I continue to see the crime and lawlessness increase throughout not just my community, obviously, but the entire state. Um, moving forward, this election uh, move in June for us, uh, the primary, is going to be about leadership and who's willing to step up uh, for law and order in their local communities. It's, you know, it's easy to sit around, have coffee with your buddies, and talk about you know what's wrong with our cities, our counties, our state, even our nation. Um, it's easy to sit around and say, you know what, uh, we should be doing this and we should be doing that to make things better. But ultimately, it takes you know someone to raise their hand, step forward in a leadership role, and put your name on a ballot. Instead of just complaining about it, do something about it. So that's why I decided to uh, run for Butte County Supervisor. It's funny you made that that comment that instead of complaining about it, is do something about it. And I think that um, that's an inherently important in what we do uh, and how you choose to do that. I think those of us that have been in law enforcement in service, uh, you know, we did it for a reason. We want to make a difference in our communities. We want to help people. And um, we're trying to give back. I think you do get more by giving than getting. I mean, it's nice to get stuff, but I think you always feel a little bit better about, uh, you know, the world you live in when you're able to be a part and making it better. And whether you're doing it at an elected office at the state the county, city level, or even, uh, you know, at your POA and you're representing all of law enforcement, um, trying to make, um, you know, the communities better and who better 
than law enforcement who see the communities at their worst and at their best and really understand where the needs are and how to go about getting those uh, resources to the people that really need it. Because it's not all just about, you know, arresting people. And I think that's a, a misnomer with law enforcement and people don't really understand that we're, you know, majority of what we do is not arrest people. It's trying to help them and guide them to where they need to be. Tom, so your your background with the CHP, how do you feel that that's helped you with working in the legislature and building those relationships uh, and trying to get legislation across the finish line where the governor actually signs it? Yeah, I think when you're engaged in law enforcement in a meaningful way, first of all, you see all parts of society in, in that kind of profession. You, you deal with the, the very rich from the very, very poor, uh, and, and you also deal with all races, all religions, and uh, it allows you to see things from a more um, neutral plane. And I think that that's really what's missing in our, uh, in our legislative atmosphere right now is that we have a lot of polarization. Either we have hard left or hard right uh, positioning, and I think that, that that creates difficulty for good public policy because I think most people have a tendency to support middle ground uh, policies. When everybody feels like maybe they didn't succeed, I think that the public might be the ones who succeeded. And I think that uh, fairness is always a very, very important aspect of good law enforcement, uh, trying to be fair, but also reacting to uh, and not being afraid, right? And I think that that's another very important aspect that uh, sometimes you have to speak very loudly against power. Truth against power is a, is a is a claim that's very popular, and but it's not popular to engage in. It's not popular to do, and it's very difficult to do for some. For me, it's not difficult to speak truth against power. And uh, I think right now, uh, we've seen over the last couple of years, the attack against our profession has been regrettable, but uh, there's a way to actually speak against that, and, and I believe that uh, the ball is moving in the right direction. Yeah, I agree with you in a sense that, um, you know, over the last several years, we've, we've as a profession, we've taken some pretty big hits. Um, a lot of outspoken people uh, are protesting against us. And it just really goes back to what, uh, you know, Peter had said, you know, in, instead of complaining, step up and do something about it. And we really do need more law enforcement, more peace officers to run for elected office. And you ran for school board, and, and Damon talks about it a lot. We need, we need cops running for every office because it's really a – it's about building a and, – and I know Peter's former uh, baseball guy uh, – you know, building that bullpen. You need to have people at all levels to bring them up so they can get to the legislature or can get to the federal government um, versus I'm going to run for Congress as my first opportunity. And, and it's very, very, very difficult to do that out yeah. of the first. Get, getting people to run, even at the at the, the lower level offices and at least getting their start. Uh, I talk about school board quite a bit because, um, you know, that seems to be the, uh, the farm team for um, the far left. Uh, and, you know, it gets your foot in the door. And often you hear people who do get elected, real, they get behind – the scenes and realize, well, it's not what I thought it was. And those folks are always vocal. Why don't you just do this? Well, sometimes you just can't do that. There's a process that has to be followed to get to that point. And it's not as easy as one may think to make changes that you think are the ones that need to be done. And so starting at a level where you can, you know, learn the processes, learn how to be someone who holds office, but also how to campaign all those, those issues, I think um, are important. And so if we could get folks to even run for the school board, it would be huge. If I could just say something real quickly. When I was told uh, back, this is 1999, that I had to raise $10,000 to run for a school board, I almost quit right there. Uh, I was talked back into it. Uh, but those are the realities that if, if you're from a larger community, campaigning is not easy. But, and governance is also a, a system that requires training, just like any other skill or any kind of profession. It requires an introduction, and then you, you move on as, as experience allows. But I will tell you that uh, being on a school board is very, very challenging, but it's also very rewarding. Like, like all service, you really, to people who have done service, you don't have to explain the value because they, they've experienced it and they know how hard it is to explain the good feelings that come from actual engaging in service. And so, yeah, 
I would encourage anybody that has a passion for uh, public policy to seek public office. Um, it's a great experience, and it'll make you a better person and your community better. Peter, for you, uh, since you're so fresh into it, it's your first time, um, you know, what are some of your experiences, uh, pros and cons about what you've gone through up to date uh, campaigning for your current, uh, you know, the Butte County supervisor position? Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's obviously a, a big learning curve, uh, you know, coming from my prior profession, prior to law enforcement as a, a professional baseball umpire, um, traveling the world, um, and now moving into obviously the, the police work and then now into politics. Um, I think the hardest thing for me is um, I haven't got used to asking for money yet. <laughs> I mean, I think that's that's the hardest thing for me is, um, listen, I want to represent you, but can you give me money to help me represent you? you um, and I, I don't I don't like that portion of it, um, but I also understand that um, – a guy once told me that money buys free speech, and ultimately we have to raise these funds in order to um, get the job done. I mean, we're, we're at a point right now, and not only in our city or county, but our state, um, patriotism, uh, passion, and drive moving forward out of this pandemic are going to be at an all-time high. Um, but unfortunately, I think we've all seen over the past few, past few years that the failed policies in Sacramento are dictating what occurs all throughout our state when it comes to law enforcement. Um, we need to get rid of some of the things that have occurred, the Prop 47s, the 57s, the AB 109s. They were all bad legislation for law enforcement. And you know, I know uh, there's some bills out there right now, um, and I'm hoping that we can move forward with those because things have to change. Um, if they don't, we're going to continue to spiral um, down this rabbit hole, and uh, we just can't do it. I think that actually dovetails real nicely into a uh, question for Assembly Member Lackey. Obviously, you have private conversations with the electeds. You sit on the Public Safety Committee, the Assembly Public Safety Committee. It's like, how do you express to the folks on the other side of the aisle uh, when they take up some of this legislation? It's this: you have street experience. You've, you've worked the streets. You've seen it firsthand. And I feel like some of the folks that are writing some of these bills, you know, they may have come from some of the inner city communities, may have had some maybe even bad experiences with law enforcement, but it, it's not working. We're seeing it in, in, in full color on the news every day that some of these policies are not working. But there's like this reluctance to change course and say, hey, you know what? I accept that this path was wrong and we need to maybe choose another path, but it just doesn't seem that way. It's just we keep reinvesting in the bad path. How do you have conversations with some of the folks behind the scenes and explain to them based on your experience and knowledge uh, being out on the streets? Yeah, what's really powerful when, when it comes to people formulating their opinions is, is the term emotion, right? Once people become emotionally attached to an issue, it's almost it's, it's extremely difficult to detach them from that, that particular feeling. And we had circumstances like the George Floyd incident that really, and it got people when they were emotionally vulnerable uh, because we were in the pandemic situation. And so it really lit a fuse that was uh, very hurtful. And so I think that what, what needs to be done, what I continue to do all the time is to remind everybody is that we're all residents. We're all residents no matter where you live. And it's important to protect the residents from people who want to prey upon them and, uh, and to make them victims. No one wants to be a victim. And that's really where it comes from because the focus has been on the perpetrator and, and to try to um, excuse inappropriate behavior, for lack of a better term. They use the term, you know, rehabilitate. But how do you rehabilitate victims, especially if that victim is no longer alive? And that is very much the case. And a lot of these, these victims are unrecoverable. But yet the focus seems to be so much on the offender and, or the alleged offender, or however you want to put it. Um, and I think that that's, we need to balance, right? Balance is always an important aspect to good public policy. And so what I try to tell people is don't just think about the, the person who's committing the crime. Think about the person who they're committing it against, right? And, and let's try to create a balance and try to prevent these circumstances that are so regrettable. That seems to be the... Uh the common denominator across the state right now, particularly with some of these uh, uh, district attorneys that are 
uh, about social justice is the the focus on the on the, the suspects or the arrestees, and there's just a complete disregard for victims. That it, it's almost shocking. On it is how complete. Much, yeah, it's it is. And They're it's, irrelevant. And it's and it's shocking that these these people that we these are the ones we're supposed to be protecting is the victims and um, keeping people from becoming victims in the first place. And then when they are, it's our obligation as public servants to, to help protect them and, and do what we can to give them the resources. And for, to watch this, it's heartbreaking to see this, just dis, the disregard for the, for the, it's and a real important point that I try to drive home all the time is what's good for law enforcement is good for our public, right? Because that's who they serve. That's who they serve. And that's who they've, they are willing to die for people they don't even know. They're all willing to die for those people in order to protect them. And so public policy that protects law enforcement protects the people. So I'll close it up with a couple questions, and I'll start off with Peter. Um, advice, recommendations for somebody considering running for office based on your experiences of just getting into the, into the mix. There's a lot to learn. So my recommendation to start would be get out early talk to a lot of people. Don't let anybody outwork you. Um, I don't think when it comes to law enforcement and police officers in general, uh, we're hard workers um, and we're not going to be outworked. So don't let that be the excuse um, whether or not you get in or you don't get in or whether you win or lose. Uh, you have to be at the forefront. You have to outwork your opponent um, and you, you go to bat for your community because ultimately that's what we've been doing our entire career. Now we're just changing the path a little. Um, nothing else is changing. We're just taking a different approach to service, and that's all it is. For you, uh, assembly member, as a veteran elected official, what's your advice for somebody starting out or considering wanting to run for office? I think that's great advice is don't, don't ever become outworked. But the other thing is surround yourself with good people. Surround, your people. surround yourself with people who understand what it takes to get elected. Ask questions. Uh, become very inquisitive. Don't feel like you could do this by yourself because you cannot. You, you won't win. You can you could do what you wish, but you won't win. The only way you win is by getting good people surrounding you who could give you good information, who understand the process, because the process can be very discouraging. What's your website for your uh, reelection campaign? Lackeyforassembly.com. Lackeyforassembly.com. And what about you, Peter? Uh, Durfeeforsupervisor.com. Durfee for supervisor.com. All right. Well, I want to thank uh, both of you for coming in. Uh, I thought this was a great uh, conversation. Uh, again, if you are in law enforcement or anybody in public service uh, looking to run for office, um, got some great advice here today from uh, Assembly Member Lackey and, and Peter T. Durfee, candidate for uh, Butte County Supervisor. So, Again, uh, thanks for coming in and providing some, uh, some wisdom and knowledge uh, about elected office. I want to thank you all for joining us on our latest episode of On the Job with Porak with the California Assembly member Tom Lackey and candidate for Butte County Supervisor Peter Durfee. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to this podcast and share us on social media. If you have any topic ideas, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram with your suggestions. As always, we'd like to close this podcast by thanking all our PORAC members and our nation's law enforcement. We hope you stay safe and have a great day. PORAC is California's largest law enforcement organization and the largest statewide association in the nation, representing over 77,000 public safety members since 1953. Our monthly podcasts, as well as past episodes, are available on PORAC.org, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, PORAC's YouTube channel, or where popular podcasts are downloaded. Be sure to follow us on all our social media platforms and tag us with your suggestions for future show topics. To learn more about our organization, visit us at PORAC.org. We are Porak.